Hey what's up guys, it's episode 5 of the Rating Climb series on Lee Chess where we're playing 10 minute rapid chess and we're going from 1000 to 2000 Lee Chess rating. Currently on 1277 and as you can see we're playing 10 minutes plus 5 second increment. And let's go. And hopefully the background music is at a good volume. So we got the French defense. Let's play my favorite line against this. This is by far my favorite line. Yeah, and now we give up the pawn <clears throat> on e4. Just straight up give it up. And then play knight c3 to win it back. Let's see how our opponent responds. So if he goes f5, it's just incredibly weakening, especially for the long diagonal. And just a lot of the light squares, the bishop can come out to c4 to target e6. And he plays it. And obviously we now can't win this pawn back. But what we can do is go f3. And try and gambit uh, the pawn entirely. And with our knight on f3, um, it'll control the e5 square. And he won't be able to push it. Meaning this pawn is kind of a backwards pawn if it can't maneuver. B6 isn't in the spirit of the position. Black needs to develop quickly. So we've already got three pieces out. Black's got zero. Playing another pawn move. I don't think he can get away with that. So we're going to apply some pressure to E6. Already Black can't develop because we can take. And after Queen E7 we can castle. And then after Queen takes, Rook E1 pins the Queen to the King. Just exposing the fact that Black has no development. So his king's vulnerable, and his pawns are vulnerable because his pieces aren't out defending them. Bishop d6 is sensible. We're going to play queen e2, threatening the pawn. Now would we actually take it um, if he didn't defend it? Maybe not, but he defends it, so that is irrelevant. And I think... I think we can castle either way. I'm kind of leaning towards king side just to get the rook on the f file. I think I'm going to go king side. Typically, you castle queen side in this uh, opening, but I want my rooks on the f and e files for obvious reasons. So I think this makes more sense. That move doesn't look good. Now we could just take the pawn. My I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it. So the bishop isn't actually pinned because we can always... Like, like the queen's defended, so if we need to move the bishop, we can. Obviously, we don't want to trade the queens because his king's so exposed. This bishop sitting on e6 stops black from castling. It's actually really difficult to get rid of it. Like, how does black actually get rid of the bishop? Because bishop c8 we just take. Also, we've got a cool little move, queen b5 check, picking this pawn up at some point. I could have taken that pawn, and we could have traded queens, but I feel like I can do better than that. That's not actually a bad move. It gets the king off of the e-file and also off of some checking squares. Now, we could just take the pawn again, and just take it, trade the queens, which wouldn't be bad, it would be up a pawn, and we can get our knight here, then, hmm, interesting, we have knight here, Does that really do anything? I don't think so. We could play knight here straight away, but then bishop pins it. So I think I'm going to play king h1. Which, you know, without the explanation, seems like a strange move. But I think it's quite good, because our knight can now jump into d4. So I think I want to do that. 
the bishop's well defended. We've got three defenders on the bishop to his two attackers, so the bishop's fine. It kind of clogs up black's position. Now we're threatening this. If he plays g6, this knight is going to be very weak to my bishop. At some point in the future. Not yet. But you can't play on simply one move attacks or threats. To, to get those tactics to go in your favor, you need to set your pieces up favorably. And the tactics will come your way. If your pieces are positioned better than your opponent's. This just gives up the form, which we're going to take, obviously. Nice little fork. Queen has to go to c7 or f8 to keep an eye on the bishop. If he goes to c7, c7, and knight b5, and we win the bishop, right? Because the queen's under attack and the bishop's attacked twice. If the queen goes to f8, it looks very, very sad for a start. But I think we can probably play knight b5 all the same. So yeah, our opponent just blunders it. And, you know, we really didn't do anything special that game. Okay, he just gives us the queen. So, we're going to take it, obviously. Uh, but we really didn't do much out of the ordinary, you know. Let's give a check. Get our queen off of this file so this bishop can move. It's actually not easy for black to block this. He's probably going to have to bring his knight out here. And then we're going to take this knight. And then take that with mate. Which is what I'm expecting. So I'm expecting knight d7. Bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes. But our opponent just resigns. So what? 17 moves. This opening is very deadly. Um, it's a very deadly opening. Because after I'll, I'll put the analysis on for you. F3 is the best move because after takes takes, like black can't move his pawn. The computer wants a6. Like that's when you know it's a weird position, right? And b6, like I said, just is not is not in the spirit of the position. Um, bishop b6 is fine. Queen e2. This is kind of the, the bog standard setup with this opening, so I was able to make those moves quite easily. Queen e7, it was short castle. Computer prefers long castle, but my logic was to get the rook on the f file. Bishop there. Yeah, I was thinking about knight b5 earlier, but the computer was it, it's very happy with bishop there anyway. And then bring the rook in, yep. It didn't want to take on there. There's no need to trade down when you've got such a big attack, right? King over was the best move. It's a fair play to my opponent. I didn't consider that move. I play king h1. Again, it wasn't knight g5. Which I didn't really consider, but... Yeah, g6. I kind of just thought we'd have long-term pressure. But that was definitely the only move. C5 was horrible. And then, obviously, knight b5 here just wins. And then, we've got some mate coming at this point. So, yeah, it's it's a tricky opening to play against. And, like, you know, we bring our bishop out early. The bishop never actually did anything. It just kind of sat there until the end, where the pressure on the knight the bishop exerted effectively like, forced an eventual checkmate, which is why the opponent resigned. Aside from the fact that he gave us a queen. Um, but, you know, when you just set up your pieces on good squares, like, if we come back to this position, all of our pieces are out doing something, right? They're all in the game, and then good stuff happens. Our opponent's got two pieces sleeping. They're still in bed, you know? they're not going to be working to their fullest potential if they're just sitting on their starting squares doing nothing. Like this bishop, for the bishops of our opponent, for example, they're pretty good. They're pretty good pieces. They're, they're controlling some key squares. But without, without their mates to help them, they can't do anything against a full, like, mobilized army. 
So we win and we go up to what's our reload now? 1306, okay. Um yeah, you guys actually can't see that. So sorry for cropping it weird. But yeah, we're up to 1306 rating. And um that's episode five. Hope you enjoyed guys. If you stayed till the end, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel since you know it's quite new. And check out my other videos if in, in the speedrun series if you enjoyed this one. But um yeah, have a good one.